So I was just explaining to everyone that this session should be um, super fascinating. Because obviously we're now in this extended um, part of lockdown for another three weeks, aren't we? Um, oh, you've just frozen for me there, Ken. Can can you hear me? Yeah, am I back? So I've oh, got the yeah, phone you're back. Do, do not disturb. For some reason, it just rang. That's insane. Oh no, <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Well, it's great to see you. And we're all super excited for this session on this um, very sunny Monday morning, but the very first Monday of the next extended part of lockdown. So we're in week five now, aren't we? We are. Scary, um, isn't it? It is it's super scary. Um, the time just seems to be sort of rolling from one day to the next, doesn't it? But I guess we don't want that to be the case for everyone watching who is a salon owner working in a salon and wants to be able to use this time wisely. Um, so for anyone who's woken up this morning and thinks, all oh, right, I want to be to go, I want to try and do something productive. Well, it was interesting. I was, I was on a, a, a chat last week and I said to the person that was interviewing me, I said, mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit like when you're on holiday and, um, you know, you, you're on a two week holiday and the first week kind of seems to take a long time to go. Mm -hmm. And then the second week just flies by. And I think we're now kind of in the metaphorical second week of this hopefully the second half of this furloughing period. Mm -hmm. But if we're not careful, it, it will whiz by. Definitely. And there's stuff happening. I mean, my, why my phone's going today is because, as you're probably aware, this today is the first date for applying for furlough payments. Yes, yeah. So my phone's been going off. And just to let you guys know, we might as well start with that. Yeah. Is that I'm already aware of people that have applied their applications have gone in. Apparently, it's been quite smooth because I don't have sales now of my own. I'm not actually doing any applications myself. But I've had a few members this morning contact me and say they've done it. It's gone through quite smoothly. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of issues um, that have arisen. And I'll touch on this now whilst it's in my head. Laura. Yeah, no, I, know, I, know, I know it wasn't no, our no. plan, but seeing as that's yeah. happening like now as we yeah, speak. Yeah, definitely. And I have, said to everyone, I have said to everyone to start putting their questions in as well. Yeah. So we'll start with furloughing. Um, if you remember what furloughing uh, is for and how it was um, set up, the rate for furloughing was based upon historical rates. So i.e. Um, it was either an average of last year's or a certain okay. period last year. Now, as you're also probably aware, national minimum wage has changed um, since April the 1st. That's very cool, yeah. But that doesn't affect furlough rates. Right. Because furlough rates were set previously. Before, yeah. Um, so as far as I'm aware, um, furloughing rates, once they're set, will carry on during the furlough period mm -hmm. because they won't vary. Yeah. Once we've made an application, which were based upon historical numbers, that same rate will carry through for furlough. So there's no need to raise um, minimum wage right. um, during that furlough period. The only exceptions to that are if, if, you're, if you're taking people on and off furlough, which I wouldn't recommend for salons to be quite honest, no. because it's too complicated. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you've got a, say, an apprentice doing some training or someone that you want to do some work for whatever, whatever work, mm -hmm. you can put them on and take them off furlough. But that's so complicated. I personally can't see a time where it's worthwhile doing. No. Um, but it, it, it is, I think, as I said, that's why my phone's been buzzing this morning, is because people are getting their furlough applications in, which is great to hear. Apparently, it's been simple. The application process yeah. was, was easy. They're just now waiting to see the uh, money arrive in their bank accounts, hopefully. Fantastic. And um, they reckon it's going to take about six days. Is that right? What we've also experienced, and, and there'll be people out there that will have experienced this, is that um, that certainly certain councils, with regards to the grants that were available, mm -hmm. some have been excellent and they've been proactive and the grants have come through like that. Some have been like snails. Mm -hmm. Some haven't known what's going on. Some have been just really awkward to deal with. Likewise, the banks with the, um, with the loans with the government yeah. back loans. Um, so it's, I'm very wary of saying, yes, this will happen. But I think the HMRC, because it's an automated process, runs through the, uh, the, um, the words gone out of my head, 
run through the the automatic system of the uh, HMRC, yeah. Um, then I believe it will be quite swift, and they'll get money into our accounts quite swiftly. So fingers crossed on that. Fingers one. Crossed. And it's been extended now to the end of June, hasn't it? The well, game. probably because they'll they'll extend it. They're kind of setting themselves yeah. up to cover themselves for however long we might. However have long, yeah. yeah. I know there've been some. Some of you will have probably seen the. Um, I think it was in the Mail and a couple of other papers. This mm -hmm. red, green, amber thing that yeah. seems to be everywhere at the moment. Please remember that is just speculation. Yeah. And it is just one of the proposals that they're considering. Um, and it's very easy to look at things and go, yeah, that's it. We're all going to be open again on the 7th or the 11th. Or mm -hmm. we look at what Switzerland doing and what Germany's doing. And, um, but um, I always, I, when people ask me, I never speculate. No. Very yeah. rarely. Yeah. Not because, because what I've learned over the years in my role is sometimes I say things and people go, Ken said, so it must be right. Mm -hmm. So I have to be very careful. But remember, all those things out there today and yesterday are purely speculation. Of course. So we don't know yet. And I know that the government will be very, very careful about mm -hmm. when they say, um, because, and let's be honest, we don't know whether what they're doing is right or wrong. And nobody knows whether they're right or wrong. And I will say one thing, I'm not a political beast at all, but I think the government have been brilliant in what they've tried to do for us no it's not been perfect there are some people that have loved what they've done and some people that haven't but let's be honest yeah they've thrown vast sums of money at it they're in a situation that's never been known in our lifetimes and i think they've tried really hard and i think at the moment what what looks like sitting on the fence is just the government being careful not to say things aren't going to happen. Yeah. They don't want us to get us excited. Mm -hmm. They don't want us getting set up. I think they're being very cautious in what they say. Yeah, Personally, definitely. I think that's a smart move. Yeah, I agree. It, it yeah. could always change, couldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And the last thing we want is to go through all this, rush back into salons, mm. and then see we have to go through this again. No, exactly. I mean, that would be yeah. horrendous. Definitely, or to um, you know, make, it, make things worse. We don't want yeah. that. Yeah. And now we've settled into what we've got. Um, okay, there's some winners and losers in this whole furloughing mm -hmm. process. And, and we had some correspondence over the weekend on our uh, 365 closed members group that we have. Yeah. And people saying, okay, you know, we're directors of companies and we've missed out and they're not supporting us. And, and, I, and I won't get political on that because no. there's no yeah. point. All I will say, and I said to our members over the weekend is, in the past, you've had a choice. Everyone's had a choice to be employed, to be an employee, so being employed. They've had a cho choice to be um, a sole trader. They've had a choice to be a director of a limited company. They've had a choice to be in a limited liability partnership. It was all a choice. Definitely. Many of those choices were made on the perceived taxation benefits mm -hmm. that any one of those statuses would have given them. Yeah. And it was a choice. Um, some people might reflect on that choice now and go, do you know what, maybe that was the wrong thing and we'll reconsider it. But you know what, it is what it is. Exactly. We made our choices, yeah. we have to live by it. And, and some employers have been saying to me, well, our team are better off than us. And maybe in the furloughing process, if you're a director of a company, they are. But then historically, you've been better off than them. People run businesses and are employers because they see the financial benefits of it. Oh, yes. We don't set up a business and then hope not to make money. No. So you kind of got to go, do you know what? In the past, this has worked for me. I've done very well. I've earned a good living. So now maybe I'm not getting the support that others are getting. Do you know yeah. what? You can't have everything in life, no. sadly. And, and if, unfortunately, in the past, your business hasn't been producing the profit, It's to give you a buffer to make you uh, mm. secure for a little while then now is the time and this is getting on to what we're really talking about yeah. today Laura now is the time to ensure that when your business is back up and running it generates enough profits the right profits to give you the rewards that you're entitled to definitely and also protect you were a situation like this ever happen again Right, before we get on to that then, Ken, should we tackle some of the questions to do with furlough? Yeah, 
and Please then we'll do. move on to the topic about what everyone should be doing right now to make sure their business is strong once we all return. Now, have you got those questions? Because they've just been yeah. asked me. No worries. So um, Claire Louise Summers, um, she asked, can you just pay someone for their time invested in training during furlough rather than taking them off furlough? No, I don't believe, and I'll be checked with the NHBF on this legally, I don't think you can do that. Um, I think you have to take them off furlough and pay them because the pay that you're processing to, to, to get them to do that work should go through the payroll. Yeah. So you can't run two amounts through the payroll. So, and, and if what whoever that person is suggesting is that you're going to give them a few quid, I can't get involved with that. No. Yeah. Which makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And I, I do get that from her point of view because she's thinking it would be useful for her team to do some training. During... Yeah. And I, I get that. Yeah. Um, but I also, uh, and actually if it's voluntary, and this is a very grey area again, yeah. if it's voluntary grey area and you're not forcing it and mm -hmm. they're doing some online training, I don't think there's an issue with that. If you ask them to do it, if you force them to do it, mm -hmm. or it in any way generates any money for your business, then no, they can't do it. Right, so but, if a member of the team says, oh, I'd quite like to do something. <laughs> yeah, and I then, think if, yeah. if, they, if they log in themselves to something, yeah. fine. I think yep. uh, where it could become grey is if you were paying for them to do something or you suggested that they do something. And let's be honest, Laura, this is totally untested. Of course. We yeah. don't know. Uh, I said to someone today, I've not yet seen a furlough policeman hiding behind a tree. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, what, but what could happen is you could get someone out there that's bitter and twisted or turns nasty afterwards mm -hmm. that reports a salon for doing something that they perceive to be the right thing to do, the, right thing to do. the kind thing to do, and it backfired. Yeah. Um, so there are grey areas. But I think the idea of taking someone off a of furlough and putting them back on furlough is probably too complicated to want getting involved with. We can't send anyone on any practical training courses. At the moment. I mean, hands-on training courses at the moment because of social distancing. So if one of your team said, do you know what, while I'm off, I'm going to look at this training course, they, if that's of their own free will, yep. you couldn't stop them doing it. So no, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So kind of, yeah, take, take from that as you will, I guess. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Claire. Yeah. And, and think wisely about how you get, how you do it. And then um, love 24. I said, do you have to pay the, the grant back? You don't have to pay a grant back. Um, if what you're referring to is the grants from the councils, mm -hmm. then a grant is, that's a different word. A grant is a grant, so some of my you don't have to pay back. It's the loans that are available through the banks that will have to be paid back. Mm -hmm. And here I will um, say a little bit, because early on in the process, at the beginning of this whole business, in some of the posts and, and videos that I did, I said to people, take the money. People are going to need money in their bank accounts to see them through this process. So I said, whatever money is offered to you, take it. But what you have to realise is that the grants are grants and you won't have to pay those back. Any loans that you take through your bank will have to be repaid. So although for the first year they are interest free, and for the first year, the government is picking up any fees involved on those loans, any set up fees, the government are going to cover those. You must be careful when you negotiate those loans. And we've been saying this to our members that you understand the terms of them, because once that year of interest free is is finished and uh, the government have picked up the fees, there will be interest after that. And some people will set up an interest and capital loan. Some people will set up an interest only loan. Um, and some people will set up different periods for their loans. But I, I want everybody out there to think of this. As I said, the grants are grants, so they, they're, they're fine. Yeah. The loans are a different matter. If, for example, you've been fortunate enough to get a 10, 15, 25, 30, whatever thousand pound loan that you chose to, to borrow, you've got to remember that is going to have to be paid back. And, that, and if it was done on an interest only loan, which it could have been because the banks were allowed to put their own terms in those loans. The only thing the government did was cover the uh, interest for the first year and the fees to set up the loans. After that, the banks could set up whatever terms they wanted. So it was down to you as the person taking out the loan 
to understand the terms and agree the terms. Now, if you've taken out a £25,000 loan and you've taken it out for three years or five years, look at your business before this, 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 this whole business started and say, could I have raised £25,000 to pay back that capital like that? Because when you get back after this, you've got to ensure your business is more profitable so that it can repay back that capital on the day of reckoning when the bank want their money back. And if we're not careful, people will get swept along with the fact that they haven't got to pay any interest or very little interest because interest rates are low. And then suddenly that day will come. Now, it's very easy to go, oh, we'll put that off. We'll deal with that when it happens. But how many, there are many salons out there that were absolutely thrown out by this whole business as soon as the doors were shut. So they didn't have any money in the banks to pay wages after a week, let alone to, you know, have enough money to pay back a loan. So one of the things I wanted to focus people on today, and this is really important, is you've got to ensure when you get back into your salons that your business not only is profitable, Profitable enough to earn the money that we discussed earlier on that you should have been earning anyway. Yeah. But also have more profit in it to pay back any loans that you may have to pay back at the end. Because don't forget those and they won't go away and they could be hanging over you, you know, for, for years. So, yes, I know that question came from yeah. the grants have to be repaid. No, they don't. But a lot of people have taken out grants and loans and the loans will have to be repaid. Fantastic. I'll just do a couple more of these questions and then we'll start talking about what everyone should be doing now to be proactive in terms of from business perspective. Uh, we've had a few people commenting. Jordana has said um, she doesn't qualify for a grant because Kensington business rates are through the roof. I know. I know, Jordana. Uh, and I, my heart goes out to you, Jordana. Jordana, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I know. And, uh, you know, fabulous salon, fabulous business and actually a victim of its own success in yeah. some respects because she's in a location that is a beautiful location, but there's a premium to pay for that. And her rates are so high that she doesn't get a grant. Mm -hmm. And part of me, Jordana, agrees that it's, I don't agree with that, it, it's wrong, because um, you have been paying that, and you have been contributing, so you could get something back. So yes, I feel very sorry for Jordana, and I know her. That's Jordana Cabello, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Georgia Bell has said, um, you need to have rates under 51,000 to qualify for the grant. Yeah, well, it's the same. It's, right. it's the yeah. same as Jordana. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> should have, um, so you answered this question earlier. Scarlett Olivia Salon, should I not give my staff the national minimum wage pay rise? And as you've said, for the furloughing. Well, the furloughing, yeah, furloughing, uh, um, the furloughing calculation was based upon an historical period. So yeah. once you've got that calculation, it doesn't change during the furloughing period because they're not yeah. working at the moment. Um, so it doesn't need to change. And no. that's my belief anyway. Um, uh, Rosin Louise has said, is there anything you think someone could be doing if they should be getting to the end of their level three in college? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's a whole ball game because those of you that know me um, from any other area will know that i'm not a fan of the mbq system anyway particularly mm -hmm. um but is there anything they can do I, of course there's there's nothing practical they can do so so no i have no idea and i don't know what we don't get involved with that mm -hmm. at 365 mm -hmm. we don't get involved with mbq training at all we're business education um so whether the agencies that deliver mbq are doing anything or not i don't know what I do know is some of the members that are involved with MBQ are very concerned at the moment because, um, and as I said, I'm not an expert on this, I'm afraid. Um, there are end dates to these where people have to be qualified by. And because that will now shift because of the, the people getting behind with the programme, I don't think there's been any answers yet on whether those end dates are going to move. And a lot of the payments involved with MBQ are focused on the end dates, completion on a certain date. So I can't help you on that, unfortunately. Uh, I think you have to contact your supplier, whoever is is running your MBQ system, and see what they're operating. Unfortunately, it's not my field, so I, I won't I won't That's try and comment fine. on that. Um, this links in with the whole furloughing thing.
Willow Hair London says that they're seeing all of these salons using their Instagram to promote themselves at this time. Um, Willow Hair Salon says they've been advised against this as it's considered marketing during furlough, which could be considered work. Are, are they allowed to um, promote themselves on Instagram during this time, during if they're furloughed? Okay, it's really difficult because the rules are, the rules kind of say that you mustn't do anything that promotes or could potentially generate income for your business. Now, we've been asked this a lot, and, and I know certainly on the NHBF website, they've said you're not supposed to, to, to post and do things. Um, I believe that if your team have got pages that are linked to your salon and they're working their pages, but not your page, then that's probably okay. But you've got to be very careful about promoting your business. And even what we're, what we're seeing, or what I heard over the weekend was that in theory, you've got to be careful about phoning guests to uh, rearrange and book appointments. Mm -hmm. All I can say is I have no idea who's going to police this, Laura. No. Um, yeah. and, 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 and so who on earth, unless somebody's going to shop someone, which could happen, yeah, I mean, I guess um, in a client, you couldn't have thought a client would shop you in, but... <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but it could be a team member. It yeah. could be another yeah. salon. That's the trouble. Mm. It could be someone that just has agreements against you, whatever, and there's always someone out there like that. So the regulations are... You will all have seen the regulations written in many places, certainly on the government site, um, the NHBF. I always have to remember to add B to that because I've known them for the NHF for so many years. But the NHBF, yeah. <laughs> the National Hairdressing and Beauty Federation, they've got clear guidelines on their website as well. And those guidelines do state that you shouldn't do that. So no. yeah. if I had to be letter of the law, I'd say, no, you're not allowed to yeah. do it. But I don't know who's going to police that, do you? No, exactly. But I think what you certainly shouldn't do is, is try. Um, any online shopping, you shouldn't promote anything that could obviously generate business. Keeping in touch with Definitely. people, I, I don't know. It's a tricky one. And I think um, our next question, um, Ken, from Fibre Hairdressing, is the kind of topic that we want to go into next, actually. So let's, um, let's go with this question, because I think it will take us where we want to go with the next part of our chat. Um, what do you feel is a must to do for all salons pre-opening? And I guess that taps into what we Yeah, that's, that, that's five in Wilmslow and Cheshire. I know. Isn't it funny how the same people ran around? around. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a, a big world, but a small world. So, Ian, that's Ian. Um, what should you do? Well, what I can say, Ian, is that in the next few days, and I've been working on a document over the weekend, you will be getting something from us at Clive anyway uh, to give you lots of ideas on what you could do. When I discovered this a little bit with, with Laura over the, uh, before we started mm -hmm. today, um, I did some research over the weekend because what, what I am in the midst of doing is putting together some documents of members to give them notes on what they do when they get back. And I'm doing it in two ways. I'm doing them via on health and safety issues, on what I call the logistics issues of shift working and all that sort of stuff. So Ian, that will be coming your way. But Ian, over the weekend, I did some research with a couple of female oh, connections oh. to the NHS. So I understand the things that people might be concerned about. And I found out that they weren't as concerned about some things Things that I were concerned about. They weren't so concerned about the social as a salon in a salon that I was. I thought salons would be concerned that they were only served by one team member, so they didn't have assistance and other people getting involved physically with them. But when I did my research, the people, the ladies that I spoke to, didn't seem concerned about that. But I would have put that to be a concern so Ken, I'm just getting back to should you do and you, we've also got to be careful here that the, the that sound on the sound is glitching a little bit there ken yeah go on 
Yeah, so I'm just going to repeat a little bit of what you said there for anyone who couldn't quite hear. Yeah, you're just a little bit glitchy. Um, even move, yeah, try moving a little bit closer or if you've got, I don't know if you've got a mic. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. So you were just saying that you did a little survey, a little poll over the weekend where you asked yeah. potential clients um, what they would like to see from salons when salons reopen. And you were surprised by the and response. They weren't as cons I was, yeah. I thought that they would be very concerned about having more than one person interacting with them in the salon. But that was something that they mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think my feeling is that once we get back, we shot towards the, the, the model of stylist doing all the work um, as to someone else doing colours and things like that, which doesn't happen a lot, a lot in salons now anyway, but I know in some. But they weren't concerned about that. Um, and even some of the issues of... Um, Of how we put up screens and things like that, they weren't concerned about. Mm -hmm. Now, I already know of salons that have ordered and are putting in place screens to partition in a salon, certainly screens at reception and things like that. Um, and although I think that might be a good idea, I'm not sure if customers are as concerned. And the trouble is, they're going to be so desperate to get their hair done, mm -hmm. they'll take risks. Yeah. And I think we're going to end up doing things believe to be right that they won't necessarily have been concerned about. Does that make sense? So we've got to do the yeah. right thing. The right thing, yeah. Because the, the, what we shouldn't do is, is not do things because we're not forced to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think we've got to be the good guys, the things correctly. Um, Definitely. I mean, I know the, um, the NHBF... And I don't know if any of you saw that little joke video that came out of the weekend okay. from Germany. You know, buckets of water over people and the backwash. Oh, the sound, cool. the, the sound is cutting a little bit there again. Hello? Um, do, you have, do you have any kind of headphones or anything? Have, we, have you lost me? Do you have any headphones? Like with a little microphone. We're just going uh, to... What, to plug in? Yeah, to just plug with a little in mic to, uh, some... my phone? Yeah, some, um, sometimes... I Let's... And just, just while Ken's looking for that, so the NHBF are um, are sort of liaising with the government to try and make sure that... It's getting the fit in for the Yeah, the, um, the headphones normally have like a little microphone piece on them. I'm just wondering if that might make the sound a little bit clearer for you. Yeah, I know I've got some, but they're they're a, they're a jack socket. Or maybe maybe Ken, if you just lift the phone up and move and they it, they don't closer. fit in the end of the iPhone, do they? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Is that can, can we hear you there, Ken? I can't hear anything. Okay, I think Ken, we got how Oh, hello Ken. I think the best thing if you can hear me, I can't hear you. Uh oh, I can't hear you. No. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me talking? You can't hear me. I, what we might do is we might try. Oh, no, still can't hear you. <laughs> Have you tried talking again, Ken? Is that any better? No, still not. <laughs> I can't hear what he's saying, but um, let's see. Uh, can anyone else hear what he's saying? 
Right, I think what we'll do is we'll see if he can enter the chat again. Um, but while while we're waiting for Ken to come back, I know the NHBF are looking at um, speaking to um, the government and making sure measures are put in place to ensure that there is a strict guidelines that all salons will need to follow in terms of safety measures for both clients and for um, staff members within the salon. Yes, I'm just going to see if... Um, Ken is in come back let's see we see we, we're just waiting for Ken to join again we'll see if we can get him back on back on board hello Ken oh that's much better you got me yes I've got Fantastic. no idea I've got <laughs> headphones everything didn't work Fantastic. Well, I think that's, I think just com coming off and coming back again seems to have worked, which is fantastic. Okay. So, yeah, so just to summarise, so you were basically um, saying that, I mean, we had a chat about this a little bit earlier, didn't we? So I guess it's important for salons themselves to think about the measures that need to be put in place because clients might always not know what's in their own best interest. Yes, I, 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 think, I think we have to be the good guys in this. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do think we have to think about um, all the things all the points of contact that we could erase even things. One thing that was interesting is that, that the women I spoke to both said that they would be happy to bring in their mm. own refreshments. Right. Okay. As opposed yeah. to being served refreshments. Yeah. That's interesting. Because they, they, even if we use disposable cups, mm. those disposable cups have been handled by someone on the way. Yeah. Um, so I think if you, as long as you set those up, those expectations before a guest comes in mm -hmm. so you say you know for safety and, and your security we recommend you bring in your own uh, refreshments mm -hmm. they can bring in we've all got these little cups and thermoses um and that's that's one simple thing i personally think we should reduce engagement with people in the salon so the idea of passing some off from pillar to post now the challenge is that when we come back there's going to be a tsunami of guests that want their hair done and we're going to want to fit them in mm. and we shouldn't. No. I mean, do we, you think we should be having sort of a, a scenario where we have a space between each station and empty um, space between each station to. Well, I think so. But interestingly enough, the, the ladies I spoke to weren't concerned about that, mm -hmm. which surprised Um, using alternate chairs in the salon, um, splitting their teams into shifts, but there are issues there that we might discuss later. Uh, splitting their teams into shifts, um, spacing out. Most salons have got stations that are bolted to the wall, fixing some ways. So spreading them out is sometimes physically hard. Using alternate stations or maybe not having many as so many people working at the same time is possible to do. Yeah. Um, but I think we need to uh, have as few people touching the guest as possible. Interestingly, one lady said to me, um, they would expect us to wear some of protection that prevented clothing from getting in touch, mm -hmm. getting in contact with them. Okay. I, I, would never, I never would have thought of that, but, but this no. was the NHS. The lady involved with the NHS said to me that's what she would like to see. Um, so Which even if we're just be, using... Um, yeah, because someone asked earlier, um, should, um, should staff be wearing PPE? Well, I think when we get to it, it will tell us whether we should yeah. wear masks. I, I don't think they'll have us wearing those full face mm -hmm. plastic vials. But I think it's quite possible that they might ask us to wear, um, you know, the, the breathing mask. I think yeah. they will make, make that clear. Um, the challenge with that is going to be obtaining them. You know, is getting these things and try and getting those in place. What, I think should, what should salons be doing now in terms well, of to try and prepare for this? I would try and locate... Uh, uh, some masks if you could but what I would also say is be careful uh, 
selling masks that are dodgy, yeah. that, that, that don't prevent much at mm -hmm. all. And there's a lot of debate over the efficacy of masks anyway. I think what a mask does is prevent you, is more, the mask that you and I could obtain quite easily. Yeah. They tend to prevent us from giving the infection to someone else, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily protect us as well from getting the infection, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's, they prevent us from passing the droplets. Mm. Um, so I, I would consider those. I would consider putting some form of separation. I think where guests are likely to come in contact with other people quite closely is at the backwash. Yeah. Because backwashes tend to be quite close together, whereas stylist stations have some separation because the stylists need to get around. Mm. Um, now, the issues you're going to have there with the stylists coming around is that they bring, they come together, stylist to stylist. So we've got to be careful with that. But at the backwash, certainly, also because, and I could be totally wrong here, but when I think of how the virus transfers, I believe it's transferred via droplets. And when we've got water in the atmosphere, and steam mm. maybe that's an area where we need to be cautious i don't know i'm i'm not a medic no but no. i certainly no. think if you've got you know if you've got backwashes where you're kind of sitting virtually next to someone maybe mm. we should try and get some separation mm. there so um, do you think it's uh, worth everyone thinking about their own personal setup and I do. what yeah. what they can do to yeah. make sure that their setup is as safe as possible for clients and i guess it will be different for everybody Absolutely. And there are companies out there. I know on our on our 365 members page this week, um, we put up um, some information on a company that provides and sells uh, security screens, yeah. um, screens for taking money and this sort of thing. Um, and they do these freestanding plastic screens. It might be worth considering those. Yeah. Certainly at reception, I would say that the, the role of reception now would not be taking money anymore. I would expect mm -hmm. the stylist to take the money. I would yeah. expect every salon to have a remote handset, um, so which could be cleaned and cleansed. I would also, personally, if I had a salon, I would not take cash. Mm -hmm. I would only use credit cards, and I would forewarn guests of that. Yeah, so, so now is the time to get yeah, a marketing. Yeah, now is the time together. to say to people, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know there are salons out there that like cash. We well, are going to have to move on from that, you know, yeah. not liking cash for whatever reasons you start to mm -hmm. want to cash in your till, forget yeah. it. I think cash will disappear. Um, yeah. I, I certainly wouldn't want to handle a lot of notes and a lot of coins. No. Coins apparently are safer because of the copper content. Apparently that helps kill the virus, but I certainly want to, wouldn't want to be dealing with uh, notes, a lot of notes. So I would go cashless, be sure you've got that in place now, with a, with a handset that can go to the guests at the styling station, as opposed to being dealt with at reception. Likewise, with taking appointments, I, would want, I think I would want to see that done at the styling station, as opposed to the, the desk. I think we could see that this become the death knell of the traditional reception. The way that works, okay. salons, without reception desks because they just have a bit like restaurants where you just have a check-in and an ipad you don't need a big desk with phone oh you just cut out a little bit there ken i think you've just frozen again oh i can't hear you at the moment ken i don't know if anybody else can um the sound is cut for me there can you not can you hear me no the sound has gone again do you, want, um, do you want to try and leave and come back one more time? No. <laughs> and we'll see if we can get um, Ken back on. But unfortunately, the sound has, um, has gone again. But I think that's very fascinating what we were just talking about there. So what Ken was basically saying was that it's, now is the time to be thinking about when salons do reopen, what you will measures you will put in place to make sure to make sure that your your clients will feel safe and often more often than not your clients might not even want you to 
you necessarily need those measures, but it's to make sure you're doing what's good for them. That's what that's, again, I think we'll give it one more shot. I mean, we're over time anyway, so I guess we'll, we're getting to the point where we'll have to be wrapping up soon anyway, Kate. Yeah. But everyone is staying with us and they're thoroughly um, finding okay. something really interesting. And I'm happy um, to do this again if you want to. Yeah, def know. yeah, definitely. I think everyone said that this has um, been super useful. So you were just saying that it might well be that the shape of the way salons are run might change in the Absolutely. future. Now, as I said, I already know salons that don't have a reception desk. They just have a check-in pod. Um, and if you think of what used to happen on a reception, More people are booking online, and I think eventually we could get to that. Well, yeah, where people make their bookings online, you know, on an app or whatever, and the traditional receptionist role will diminish. Well, the traditional receptionist role will change, uh, and already receptionists we coach them in how to answer the phone, we coach them in how to grow the business. Yeah. Receptionist role nowadays is not to sit and make bookings; it's to grow the business. Yeah, that role we can now focus it's on ongoing mm -hmm. yeah um, so those things will change i think we need to go uh, uh, electronic as much as we can even um consultations you know why you can't have a pre-visit consultation yeah one thing that did come out and i'll pop this in now before we go because we're tight on time one thing The research I did at the weekend was that the, the, the women said, okay, our hair's grown out, yep. our colour's grown don't get them back in your chair and do what you did before. Mm. Take this as an opportunity to go, okay, let's see what we're doing. Restyle. Because they said, you know, yeah. yeah, now we want, yeah. now we want inspiration. So get yeah. your cogs going start inspiring mm. people and then you can just even the prices that you are going to have to charge yeah. to mm. cover all the things that we talked about earlier on gushing definitely oh i think you might just be cutting out again there Ken. Oh. let's see if um see if it comes back oh are you still there oh can you say if you speak to me there ken we can see if we can hear you Oh, I think <laughs> Oh dear, right. I'm not sure if Ken's going to come back again because obviously we have sort of got to the end of this session um, as, as it is. But I think it's super clear that this has been a super useful session for all of you. Um, let's see if he has... Oh, he's come back again. Right, we're going to give us one more shot. Hello there, Gustav. I can see you there. Uh, right, let's just going to see if he's connecting. Hello, Ken. Should we give this one more shot? And if it cuts out again, yeah. we'll, we'll it's bonkers, it isn't it? It's I know, bonkers. it's crazy. Um, yeah, so someone did ask that. Oh, that was fantastic what you were just saying there about restyles. And in, you yeah. know, people are going to want to come in wanting a completely different style. Yeah. And someone just asked, should you be increasing prices for that? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a great fan of increasing prices. What you should, shouldn't be doing is putting prices down. Don't get involved with any discounts. You've got to remember that minimum wage has gone up during this period. So those of you that got team on minimum wage, when they get back, they're going to be paying them more. Yeah. So should you put your prices up? You have to be careful that you don't appear to be opportunist. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is if you are planning a price increase, you should go ahead with it. Yeah. Um, and what you certainly shouldn't be doing is looking at ways of discounting or reducing your prices. You have got to get some money back into your coffers. Yeah. You've got to start building up a battle mm -hmm. chest. And I don't think you need to be discounting. And, and and would I be looking to raise prices? Probably. You're going to have to bring in a lot of new things. It's going to cost you money. You're going to be short of money. I don't think you should be. I, I hate to stand here and say to everyone, put your prices up. Justify it. Yeah. But if you're delivering a product that is worth more, then mm -hmm. charge more. If you need to charge more because your business is profitable, and people say, well, I can't charge more. And if all that's out of it is people start looking at what they're doing and going, do you know what? 
if I need money, then what I do has got to be worth it. There's so many salons out there delivering what they've done for years. Oh, no. Definitely. Oh, no, is it? I can still hear you. I just can't see can you. you. Oh, right. I can hear you. It's just frozen. So keep going. We'll do a little wrap up now before it cuts out again. <laughs> oh, can I hear you? No. no. All <laughs> oh, right. Well, do you know what? Can you hear me? Can you hear me at the moment? That they've um, thoroughly enjoyed this session and can Ken come back again next week. I think that's a definite for let's try and get Ken back next week with us and we can tackle more of this topic. And oh, has he come back again? I think this must be our fourth or fifth time with this. And thank you so much to everyone for um, sticking with this because I know it hasn't been the easiest session. Um, and let's see if we can get Ken back on again. Everyone is sticking with us through this, Ken, which is fantastic. And we've got this is few... great. It must be at peak times or whatever. I don't know. We've got or a maybe few I'll people try... saying that they want, they want you to come back again, which is great. So, um, Good. Yeah. Maybe I'll do it via, we'll try it via the laptop. We'll do a test in between, Laura. See if we can yeah. do it via the laptop and I'll hardwire it instead of yeah. using Wi-Fi. No, exactly. Um, what was I saying? I, I know I was saying there are many salons out there that have been doing what they've done for years. What we've learned in this crisis is there are is there are salons out there that aren't profitable or aren't as profitable as they need to be. So if you need to make more profit, you've got to make your product. That's what you deliver. And it's not a haircut. It's the overall thing. You've got to make it worth what you now need to charge for it. So what I would say to salons is when you get back, look at what you're doing. Is it worth what you need to charge? Because if it's not, you're, you're going to be in trouble. Again, yeah. But, but is it worth thinking about what you could do to make it worth the extra money? Absolutely. Yeah. So if, if you don't because think if, what you're, that you can't raise your prices, why can't you raise yeah. your prices? Exactly. Yeah. Why can't I raise my prices? Yeah. Um, because there are salons out there that charge way more than anybody else. So, and I mean, really understand what they, um, really understand what makes, them different and there are some out there that, that I absolutely love the way they work and what they charge and then we can't charge that and I think well no of course you can't because you're not doing what they're doing you're just doing cut and blow drives like you've done for years so it's now a good time it's now uh, a good time Ken it's now a good time to look at your whole salon menu and reformulate it come up with new packages things that are going to justify absolutely. the extra money I mean, I've, I've been saying to my members, um, you know, the members of 365, look at your services. Mm. Probably 80% of your ven uh, revenue comes out of 20% of your services, 20 or 30% of your services. Yeah. Stop doing things that aren't making money. Start understanding which services are actually making money and which aren't. There are many salons out there that don't actually know what it costs them to deliver a balayage yeah. because they've never sat down and worked out the cost. So they don't know if they're making profit or not. Yeah. I've looked at salons and done the analysis and found out that their actual product cost in some of their chemical services is as high as 25%. They've yeah. just never done the maths. We've got to start understanding our businesses so that we can make the profit that we need. Definitely. But because as hairdressers, we don't like doing that, we, we believe it over there. Well, there's no, there's no excuses and you know what? now, is there? It's now the in the and there's no, there's no, no excuses because we've got this time to look at those numbers and crunch them. Correct. Fantastic. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Fantastic. So now is yeah. that, so that in terms of priorities, I guess that, so what we've spoken about today, just to summarise, so making sure you could look, make sure you get your applications in for the furloughing scheme. Number one. Number two, you were talking, yeah. Um, accepted. Yeah, and then number two. Um, then we've got to. Um... Oh no! Oh, we, I can hear you. Keep going. Can you? Yeah, I can hear you. So yeah, so the second one you were talking about the measures to put in place from a safety point of view in the salon. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna yeah. So I'll carry on with the wrap up. So yeah, so the second um thing that we were talking about with Ken was how from a safety point of view for clients. Um, and we're hoping that there'll be a set, set 
a list of measures from the government that everyone will be able to follow but start thinking about it now what you can put in place in your own salon whether you work from home whether you work um in a salon oh he's coming back again perfect um so start considering that because you do not want to be on the back foot when salons can reopen and you have not got those measures in place and then the third thing we were just talking about um hello there ken i was just doing the wrap up so can we hear you now are you still there Oh, it's cutting a little bit. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Perfect. So, yes, yeah, so I was just saying that the measures to be putting in place in terms from a safety point of view, that's something to be considering right now. And then the last thing to think about um, how yeah. you can raise, Look at raise, that. Yeah, and raising your prices and thinking about your salon menu and whether you can justify doing that. weeks in now this is what people should have been working on mm. they should have you know we got people straight away the first thing we did was get them to do a break even on the salon for when they come out of this <laughs> we then i can started... hear you. it's just this is the end part of the freeze where it normally freezes your screen and then we can't hear you after that but oh can we hear you now ken has the sound gone again <laughs> no <laughs> Oh dear. Well, I know. Ah, I know. Okay. But I think we were, we were wrapping up the session there, but I think you've, you should have the main points that we've kind of covered this morning. So make sure you get those applications. Start considering about the safety message for your clients and, and start considering how you're going to raise that extra money when the salons do reopen by looking at your salon menus and making sure you start suggesting to your clients to give them a restyle when they come back in, don't just do what you would have always done for them because they probably are going to want something completely different. And obviously that means that they'll be able to spend more money with you as well. Hello there, Ken. No, I'll do what you said. No, do you know, I was just wrapping up. So just, do you want to give one line, your final words of wisdom in one line before it cuts off again? Okay. I, I, I think really the, the main thing at the moment is people have got to understand their business, got to understand how they make money, do the stuff they hated doing. Because if you go back and open your doors and carry on doing what you were doing before, you're not going to be any better off. Mm -hmm. If you weren't making enough money before, you won't make money afterwards and you'll have a big debt outstanding. Just don't carry on doing what, you, what you've always done because you'll carry on getting what you always got. Okay. You use this time wisely. Yes. Because yeah. if you haven't done it yet, you've already wasted four weeks. And there'll be your competitor down the road that would have already been doing that stuff. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yes. So safety measures, making we'll see sure if we can that... do this, this again, shall we? Def definitely. I think, as I say, we've had lots of positive feedback. So let's definitely um, get a date in the diary to do it again, Ken. Are you still there? Perfect. Brilliant. Thanks.